Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this event for inviting us to give this presentation entitled High Fundamental Frequency Acoustic Wave Sensors for Fast and Non-Invasive Cancer Diagnosis. The outline of the presentation is the following. First, I'll give a brief introduction on acoustic wave sensors. I'll talk to you about the different acoustic devices we work with, the challenges we face to work with them, and how we are trying to overcome them. And finally, I'll talk to you about the European Commission project in which we are currently involved. But before starting, uh, please allow me to first introduce our company. We are AW Sensors, which stands for Advanced Wave Sensors. We are a small company, which is grown, uh, but uh, and currently we have 12 full-time uh, full employees. Among them, we are engineers, scientists, professors, students, etc. Most of us uh, with many years of experience in acoustic, sense, in acoustic sensing. The company started as a spin-off company at the Polytechnic University of Valencia in uh, 2009. And currently, our offices are located in Paterna, Valencia, Spain. We, uh, we design, manufacture, and market electronic instrumentation for the characterization of acoustic sensors. We do electronics and software development, as well as necessary accessories to work comfortably with our technology. So now I uh, will start with the introduction uh, of acoustic sensors. Acoustic sensors are devices that operate with, a, uh, with an acoustic wave. They can be divided into two main groups uh, or families. One uh, is the bulk acoustic wave sensors in which the acoustic wave is generated through a piezoelectric substrate and travels on it. Uh, it is confined in the whole volume of the substrate, what you can see here in the presentation in black. The second family or group is the surface generated acoustic wave sensors, in which the wave uh, is generated only on one surface of the piezoelectric substrate. Among the bulk, uh, bulk devices, we find the quartz crystal microbalance or QCM the film bulk uh, acoustic resonators and the cantilevers. These are cross-sectional views of such devices. In the QCM, we have a piezoelectric uh, material sandwiched between two metal electrodes. In these devices, we commonly can see substrate thicknesses, thicknesses uh, ranging from 50 to 200 micrometers uh, which leads to low operation frequencies. For high frequencies operations, uh, like in the case of F-bar uh, sensors, the thickness of the substrate has to be reduced, is reduced to achieve such a uh, higher frequency. This does not happen uh, for surface generated acoustic waves uh, or soft devices, uh, which uh, make this device more robust to, when operating in higher frequencies. Uh, in this uh, group of, of SGO, our uh, surface generated acoustic wave, we also have different uh, devices, type of devices. However, for op the operation uh, in liquid medium, uh, which is required for the development of advanced sensing applications, we, uh, we work mainly with QCM and with a lot of uh, wave devices. Uh, because uh, not all of these devices uh, operate uh, properly in liquid media. In both families, we, uh, when, when we, or when there is a, a molecule or a protein, protein or DNA strand, which is attached in the device surfaces, a change in mass will perturb the acoustic wave and change the operation frequency of the device. So 
but how how uh, do we how can we generate an acoustic wave in these devices? The answer is that it is thanks to the piezoelectric phenomenon, which translates electrical activity into mechanical activity and vice versa. We find this phenomenon in materials like quartz. Uh, as you can see here in the in the in the in the slide. Um, we also have here a real a photo of a QCM device and uh, here uh, of a love wave device. Both of these devices or sensors were uh, are, are, are fabricated using AT cod quartz or can be fabricated using this uh, type of uh, material because they can also be fabricated with other substrates. But these are the most, AT cod quartz is the most common uh, substrate for the development of such devices. Uh, and the, this AT cod quartz is a specific cut uh, of the quartz in a given crystallographic direction, uh, as you can see here in the slide. Um, when working with QCM devices, uh, uh, sensors uh, we have many challenges um, we uh, QCM devices have been used widely in, in the electronics and communication industry uh, however um, this the, the, their utilization as sensors and specifically as biosensors uh, uh, is new it and has been a little explored well it started some decades ago. So the challenges or, uh, about working with these devices and the strong points about using these as, uh, devices as uh, biosensors are uh, that they, they can uh, be easily calibrated. They are independent of optical properties. Uh, sample preparation is unnecessary or simple. Uh, the direct uh, and real binding detection, it is possible, uh, we're working with them. Also, a real-time monitoring uh, is possible and uh, they are low cost in principle. The needs we currently have for applying, uh, when applying these devices as biosensors are increasing the, the sensitivity. Uh, uh, improving the limit of detection and improving the reliability and robustness of, of devices uh, of these devices and also uh, to have a multi-analyte detection. And the challenges we currently face when working with this technology are uh, to work with high frequency resonators and in order to improve the sensitivity, to improve the signal to noise ratio uh, when working at higher frequencies, to improve the functional system um, in general, and to work with arrays of sensors for achieving multi -analysis, uh, analysis. So how in AWS sensors uh, we are facing these challenges and needs and how are we overcoming these technological hindrances. It turns out that uh, higher uh, sensitivities can be achieved when working at higher frequencies. However, when increasing the fundamental operation frequency in QCM devices, we have to change for a newer technology called high fundamental frequency QCM or HFF QCM. Because uh, when working at higher um, fundamental frequencies, these uh, devices uh, become very thin and fragile. So using HFF QCM requires to change the device fabrication approach for a mess approach where only the part of the substrate of the substrate where the electrodes are placed uh, is the one that is etched and become thinner. This way, the rest of the substrate keeps its original thickness, and we can get a sufficiently robust device. 
Another interesting point when working uh, with higher uh, operational frequencies in QCM is that the device's surface area is reduced. Uh, this facilitates the creation of arrays of devices, which means that we can have several devices in the same substrate uh, as this image shows here in this slide. Uh, this is a cross-sectional view of the three HFF UCM device of, a, of three uh, uh, different sensors. Uh, and um, they, you can appreciate how they are located in the same substrate. In addition, these devices, uh, in the, 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 they are reduced, the, the size is reduced also require lower sample volumes. That's, that is another advantage, advantage we have for, when operating with this type of sensors. Now I'll get into the European project part of uh, this presentation. But first I want to explain that we have more experience in biosensing applications uh, in the field uh, of two main industries, the health and pharma industry uh, and the other, the food industry. In the health and pharma industry, our technology can be used for di uh, disease diagnosis or drug discovery. While in the food industry, it can be used uh, um, in food safety and quality control processes. An example of application in the food industry in which we have uh, been involved is the detection of honey alteration with substances that are not allowed in the market. On the other hand, in the health uh, industry and pharma industry, I'm, I'm giving you, for more specifically, specifically for the health industry, I'm giving you one example in the rest of my presentation. Uh, because the European project I will talk to you about is targeted to health fighting cancer disease. So this European project uh, called HUDNA, uh, you have in the, its website uh, over here, uh, uh, is being developed in three years. It, started, it started in September 2017, and a total of 3.4 million euros was granted for, this de for its development. The ultimate goal uh, of this project is to generate a disruption in the so-called liquid biopsy uh, to avoid traditional invasive uh, biopsy, tissue biopsy. Mm -hmm. The project aimed to contribute to a better diagnosis of colorectal cancer, which is the second most uh, uh, common cause of cancer death in the, EU, uh, in the European Union. Uh, that is like the the the, the impact of, of the of the, the project that will uh, contribute to this uh, situation. And the objective is to achieve a cost-effective, effective and accurate diagnosis tool that allows clinical lab staff for early detection and monitoring of colorectal cancer cancer in real time. So in the project, uh, uh, the objective is to do, to achieve this uh, in a reliable, affordable, highly sensitive in the atrial or septomolar range uh, of detection and in a simple uh, way. All this, like all this um, without using, without the need of PCR, PCR amplification. Therefore, the goal is to achieve an alternative method to current PCR techniques that um, overcome some of PCR disadvantages. To achieve the goal, these goals uh, and objectives of the project, uh, uh, this is the list of uh, partners who participate in the consortium to achieve, to achieve it. Uh, we are mainly institutions of Europe, but we are also working here with a partner in, partner in Israel.
So now I'll, uh, I'll explain the technical approach we're using to, um, to reach the, the project goals. Uh, the approach relies in a liquid biopsy by, by, uh, philosophy and look for DNA of colorectal and lung cancer tumors. The extracted, the extracted sterum sample will be retreated with magnetic microbeads to selectively capture colorectal cancer biomarkers. biomarkers. Later, the sample will be transferred to an HFF UCM sensor array where uh, in each of the acoustic sensor, as you can see here, uh, a probe will be immobilized. When the target DNA is attached in the probe, it, produce, it will produce an acoustic, res um, acoustic response uh, in the sensor due to a mass change. And this response is greatly enhanced, will be greatly enhanced by amplifying the, the, the response with high dissipative, with a high dissipative particle. Part, such particles uh, are created by, by combining DNA uh, with big liposome structures like this. This way, uh, circulating tumor DNA um, and um, which is the fraction of circulating, uh, circulating cell-free DNA that derives from cancer cells can be detected as analyte within the liquid biopsy, providing an alternative, reliable and non-invasive source of clinically valuable information. Our company is contributing more in the sensing and electronic characterization part of the, of the project. That's, that's why I'm going to focus on this part. Um, for this, uh, uh, a special um, HFF QCM device of 150 megahertz uh, was designed in an array configuration. We first uh, designed it, um, later simulated in, using finite element methods, and finally fabricated. Different sensor arrays with different configurations were designed, fabrication, and tested in the project. At the end, a 24 sensor array was chosen as final design, and it was manufactured. In addition, the cartridge for packaging uh, and a proper handling of the, of the array fluidics was designed and fabricated. Uh, and fabricated. Uh, you can see the final cartridge uh, and the integration with the array here in this in, in this photo. Uh, uh, in addition, here um, there is a 3D model of such um, uh, of such cartridge, and and here in this part you can see the central part, a zoom view of the central part of the 3D model here. So. And here, that we appreciate each of these square yellow parts are in the sensors, a, a, a single element sensor in the full array. So we'll have six channels of fluidics mm -hmm, and 24 sense independent sensors. So the sensor array, uh, array, which was finally developed in the frame of that project, integrates then. 24 sensors in the same substrate. Uh, it is robust, highly sensitive, very small, and it has two overtone operations. In this slide, uh, we make a focus view, uh, in, uh, focusing the fluid part of the cartridge, which was very challenging. Um, these are real photos of the cartridge, cartridge center made using a microscope. Um, where, where they implemented uh, channels uh, and the array uh, can be observed. In this other photo, we checked if a red liquid uh, flow, could flow through the channels without, with no liquidity. Uh, the, the, so these results so far uh, has, has been very successful. 
regarding the instrument we are developing to operate uh, and the sensor array, it will allow an ultra sensitive detection comparable to that of, uh, of droplet digital PCR and next generation sequencing. It will be suitable for standard biopsy. It will be lightweight. It will have a user-friendly operation and easy, easy installation. It will have a, a noise reduction algorithm and post-processing tools developed in the software instrumentation in instruments or in the software of the instrument. It will, it will allow to monitor the 24 sensors of the array simultaneously and it will be thermoregulated. Because this system uh, we are developing will have the following competitive advantages uh, against drop the digital PCR and next generation sequencing. It will be uh, a, a companion for diagnostics, affordable to more people, uh, and PCR bias free. So as, con as a conclusion uh, of the, my uh, presentation, I, have, uh, I want to say that thanks to this system, uh, uh, it will be possible to selectively detect cancer biomarkers in serum samples by monitoring in real time DNA strands, protein interactions like the ones of neutravitin, biotin, and biotin at BSA, uh, liposomes and cholesterol binding on the acoustic sensor surfaces. And with these dynamic changes, uh, and with this approach, dynamic changes of the tumor can be detected, which has the potential to monitor tumor burden and the biological alteration of the tumor under pressure of anti-cancer treatments. So it can be used for uh, anti-cancer treatments follow up. So, well, this is the end of my presentation, and I thank you all for your attention. And we also thank the European Commission for the founding of this interesting project, which we hope soon will make a difference in the health industry. Thank you.